Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lord Gord Podcast. This is your host, Lord Gord, and I'm giving you information that's factually correct and politically incorrect. And there's nothing like the real thing, baby. There's nothing like the real thing. So this week, I'm going to talk about social media, the negative aspects of social media, and why I don't personally like social media. So let's get started. Social media, while, ha- while having advantages, is an abject waste of time. Its appeal to vanity and social approval lead to unproductive consumption and a false view of oneself. It is a hall of mirrors, a place where one can see oneself as whatever they want themselves to be. It is a masquerade ball where one can present themselves as whatever they want to be. In other words, it is a costly isolation from reality. So I'm going to touch on some quick facts then I'm going to give you a personal, my personal experiences with social media and how I cut down my consumption and how it led to remarkable gains in my life. So let's, let me give you some quick facts. The average person spends 40 minutes a day on YouTube, which I really don't consider social media. I consider it more, um, more of a video streaming platform, but YouTube has been kind of going down the drain because they've been censoring conservatives. Uh, Let's keep going. The average person spends 35 minutes a day on Facebook, 25 minutes a day on Snapchat, 15 minutes a day on Instagram, and a minute a day on Twitter. And that's the average person. Lord knows uh, when it comes to some of these narcissistic uh, fellas and these narcissistic ladies out there, how much time in their day they are devoting to social media. Because if we take out YouTube, that's about, man, that's about oh, that's about an hour a day that someone spends on social media. You're not even awake 24 hours a day. You're awake more like 16 or 18 hours a day. Man, it's a lot of time. The average person checks their phone 150 times a day. So it's just... Because consumers refuse to pay for social media services, because, you know, when you give someone an option between paying for something and not paying for something, most people don't want to pay. Because of that, social media companies use algorithms to keep you on the platform as long as possible. It tracks your use and proceeds to continuously show you content that you may like. In my case, if I'm on social media, it's going to keep showing me pictures of pretty ladies. Because anyone who knows me knows, I can't keep my eyes off pretty ladies, even though that's a crime in certain segments of the population these days. You know, when you look at nice-looking young women, that's a, a microaggression or whatever the hell these leftist idiots call it. So they do this to keep you on the platform as long as possible. And in turn, they can convert your time into ad revenue. So because people don't want to pay for social media, maybe it'd be like $2 a month to use Instagram, or maybe you pay $10 for the app. Because people don't want to do that, uh, these companies, they mine your information. Uh, They have these algorithms that that can predict what you like, and it'll keep showing you what you like so you can stay on the platform as long as possible so they can generate more ad revenue by, by pitching the advertisers, hey, people are spending 20 minutes a day on our platform. You know, in five years, we want it to be 30 minutes a day on our platform, and that's how they make their money. They're not evil. You know, they're just operating with the uh, incentives and constraints of their business, Okay. So, um, so with likes, for example, uh, I know that Facebook, they, they have a, like a, they delay likes on certain posts. So if you post a new profile picture, they'll show it to some of your friends and then they'll like it. So then you can come, uh, interact with Facebook and comment and, oh, they like me, oh. 
and then they'll show it to other friends later so they can like it and you can come back again. Uh, what's another one? On, on Instagram, oh, Instagram does this so well. Well, they're owned by Facebook, by the way. Um, they'll just keep showing you, uh, you know, pictures and, 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 and photos and videos that they assume that you like based on what you've checked out previously. So, for example, if you like to check out chili dogs and other fast foods, and you do that pretty often, you know, you like to li you like fast food pictures, so on and so forth. When you go on Instagram, it's going to show you more pictures of fast food because it knows that's what you like. And, uh, you know, people usually gravitate towards what they like. Uh, Netflix isn't social media, but they're in the same space. They're, they're, they're competing for your attention. So what Netflix does is they'll automatically play another video 30 seconds after you've watched another video. And their reasoning for doing that is even though you pay for it, they know that if you don't spend a certain amount of time on Netflix per month, that's going to lead to you canceling your account. So they want you to spend at least a certain amount of time. I don't know the exact number. So that's why they keep showing you uh, videos after watching an episode, like when I had Netflix, you know, I'd watch X Files and then it 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 play another episode. If you don't do anything, if you don't say no to watching uh the X Files, it'll show you another episode in about thirty seconds. Facebook does this with their videos as well. They um, if you watch a video that's that's posted on Facebook, it'll automatically play another video. Like even before it's over, like right after a Facebook video is over. It'll play you another video because while the video you've been watching is is finishing up, it'll have a counter saying, you know, 10 seconds before the next video. And of course, they're doing that so they can keep you on the platform as long as possible so they can generate more ad revenue. I know that this happens with Twitter as well. You know, uh, Twitter will send you an uh, email saying, follow so-and-so, follow so-and-so. You may know this. Look what so-and-so said. And they're doing that so you can go back on the platform and they can generate uh, revenue by you spending time on, on their platform. I mean, it's not like you're, you're, you're researching uh, science or economics or engineering on, on these platforms. I mean, it's just like cat videos and illegitimate children and food and shoes. You know, real productive uses of uh, our time. Um yeah, that, that, that's what they do. And also, um, the notifications on your phone, I mean, they'll send you notifications for anything. Uh, So-and-so liked your video. So-and-so liked your post. So-and-so retweeted you. Uh, your Facebook friend is on Instagram at I like pie 103 You haven't posted on Instagram in a while. So-and-so followed you. So-and-so followed you. And, and, and the reason why they do this is uh is because human beings are social creatures you know we 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 long for social approval and 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 to uh be reciprocal socially so if i give you something you'd want to give me something in return if i say hello to you you'd want to say hello back so uh, they send you all these notifications so you can go back into the platform spend more time on the platform and generate money for them um that's that's the same thing with the likes. Uh, I, I I'll touch on likes a little bit later, but but likes are are useless. I mean, it takes no time or effort to give someone a like. But as soon as you see someone like your video, or or your post, you you know it'll send you a notification and you you'll want to go there and say thanks for liking my stuff or whenever someone comments, oh thank you so much, you're so kind. Ah. like come on, women, when, when when you're posting pictures of yourself in, in swimsuits on the internet. You know what's coming, and, and you know why you're doing it. You're doing it to 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 uh, to bring attention onto yourself. Um, you're doing it because you want to present a, a positive image to other people. You you want to present to people that you are successful and that you are pretty. So I, I never understood how women could get upset when 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 men are making comments at you. I mean, you you're posting pictures of yourself being scantily clad, but then you get upset. When a man says, hey, uh, you're too sexy. 
Call me. Um, yeah. So, um, that's nonsense. So, uh, let me talk about why I don't like social media and some of my experiences in the past. I, I you know, I, I did the MySpace thing. Man, I just remembered MySpace right now when I was doing the outline for this. I didn't even remember MySpace or social media. But, uh, Facebook is something I was convinced to join when I was in high school. Now I remember sending all these people these friend requests. And, you know, most of these people, I knew them personally, but they weren't my friends. They weren't people who I really wanted to spend time with. I was sending them friend requests to use them as props so I can display to the world that I have high social status. I have social capital, you know. So rather than wanting to have actual relationships with these people, you know, they were just pieces on a chessboard. They were just uh, props and in the, the image that I wanted to present to the world. Um, it, it's really, uh, what's the word for this? It, it's really cynical w w when you think about it. You know, I, I remember, you know, I'd look at other people's pages and say, oh, they have more friends than me, so I need to get more friends so I can show that I have more friends. It, 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 really, it really wasn't a, uh, a healthy way to live when you care more about your your presentation in a cyber fake world where where people are putting on their best face and are only presenting what they want people to know then actually having relationships with human beings meaningful relationships with human beings and uh in the real world and you know when I started college I wasn't I wasn't the best student I was a horrible student you know I would spend more of my time uh on social media you know uh chuckling and engaging in all various forms of, of skullduggery with other miscreants rather than studying and taking advantage of the opportunity I had. Man, I, I remember in, in my college days, early in my college days, I spent so much time on, on Twitter and, and Facebook and Instagram just, just posting nonsense, uh, devoting my time to nonsense. And it really hit me, maybe like the middle of my second year in college, that you know most of this material was toxic it's not benefiting my life in any way it's not benefiting the lives of those posting this nonsense in any way and my time would be better served elsewhere you know like studying or reading or learning uh important things about the world about the economy about economics and you know things that are serve me and my society much better than uh, looking at what someone's eating or looking at some broad who I'll never be with, uh, looking at her outfit. So I noticed in my life, you know, once I curbed my social media use, I mean, my grades started going up. I started feeling better about myself. You know, I was more dedicated to being a better person and espousing positive ideas and, and behaviors than when I was on social media. You know, once I stopped caring about what other people were doing and I started worrying about my own life, I had a marked improvement in my life. And, and, and so many of the people on social media then and today, I mean, it's just, it's complete narcissism. I mean, what they post is just pictures of themselves, uh, pictures of their cars, Pictures of their shoes, pictures of them doing stupid things, pictures of them in, in the nightclub. And, 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 you know, they're doing it for social approval, they're doing it for likes, and they're doing it to, to present an image of themselves that really isn't one-to-one uh, -one with reality. Um... You know, I, I was talking about likes a little earlier, and, and my problem with the likes is that it 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 looks like it's a measure of of success or a measure of competence or a measure of you doing the right thing, but the reality is it takes really no time to like a photo. Someone can just be on their phone at lunch, and they can just click like, click like, click like. 
And, and it, it really doesn't mean anything. So you see so many of these kids and adults who think like kids, they put so much stock into likes when likes are, are meaningless. You know, I, I talk about uh, inflation and how the worth comes with the goods and services, the, you know, the, the expertise and the time invested, not just the, the, the paper money. So with likes, you know, for, for someone to actually like your product, what would be a greater indicator of them liking a product would be, hey, maybe they call you or, or you know, they meet up with you or they spend money on your product. You know, just clicking like really, really means nothing. And, and, and it's just unfortunate that so many people put so much stock into how they present themselves in a fantasy world that is just a, a waste of time. And, and you should you should see some of these people. They get upset when they don't get a lot of likes. It hurts their feelings when they don't get a lot of likes. You know, I mean, friendships are lost. You know, people cry and and they, they become depressed and angry and, re, and, and, and resentful when people don't like their posts. And, and the reality is, why do you care so much about what people are saying about you who aren't part of your life? You know, that they're investing nothing into your life. They're doing nothing for you. So why would you give them that kind of power over your psyche, over your, your, your emotional state, over your self-esteem? It makes no sense. Um, you know, and, and another thing is, is just how... This is how eager people are to to post their their uh, their personal life on social media. I've said this before. You know, um, if you're not calling me or or meeting up with me to tell me about your personal life, I don't care about your personal life. You know, life is the noun and personal is the adjective. If it's personal, why should I care? I mean, even even if it's public, more more times than not, if it doesn't have anything to do with me, and if someone isn't telling me directly, I don't care. So I mean, so many people have have gone to jail or lost their children, you know, posting pictures on the internet of them fighting people, jumping people, robbing people, uh, showing weapons, and drugs, and other forms of skullduggery, and and, and the reality is they're doing this because they want attention. They're doing this because they put stock into likes, into their status and social media. When it really means nothing. You should see how intrusive people are in their lives. They they film you without asking. They just put everything on the internet for, for people to watch. And then they get upset when people know everything about their lives. Or they get upset when the police arrest them because they put on the internet... That, that they have a murder weapon or they put on the internet that they're beating up people. And that's that's a black thing, by the way. I I mean, there are websites dedicated to that where, where you can see videos of black people beating up black people or white people and it's posted by black people and sometimes they're laughing at the fact that they're beating people up. How could they get upset when someone sees them as, as savage barbarians or when the police arrest them when they are the ones that put the evidence, the incriminating evidence out there it's absolutely ridiculous i mean i've told people in private and i'll tell you now listeners you know if, if i didn't do music or i didn't do this podcast i wouldn't be on social media i'm never on social media the, the only time i'm on social media is when i'm promoting my podcast when i'm doing something with music or i'm posting an article you know uh on facebook and you don't even have to go on facebook to publish the article or a video on YouTube. You can just post it straight off YouTube. And, and my sister asked, you know, how do you have so much time to read these books? Um, because I'm not wasting my time on social media looking at people's nonsense. It's that simple. Um, let's 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 look at this here. Uh, yeah, I mean, just before I finish up, it's the reason why I don't I don't I don't do too much texting either. Um, you know, most communica human communication is nonverbal. Uh, I've looked at some information that says that 
the, the, the human mind works at an optimal level when you're face to face with other people. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, we evolved in, in hunter gatherer societies being face to face with each other. And there's so much context that is lost when you're just texting someone or, or talking to them online. So people who know me know I don't do the texting. I mean, if you want to talk to me, you can call me uh, or you can meet with me face to face. But texting just like a like on social media, it takes little to no uh, investment of, of time or energy. So I, I, I treat it as such. Not saying I don't text people back, but you know, if I'm going to have a conversation with someone, I'll tell them to call me or I'll call them. So to wrap this whole thing up, you know, social media isn't an evil to itself. I mean, there's a lot of good information that, that's shared on social media. People use it to promote good products, so on and so forth. I'm just saying that, that most of it is just, uh, is just a dog and pony show. It, it's, it's a masquerade ball where people can show people whatever image they want, and they can project onto themselves whatever they want to see in themselves without it uh, cooperating with reality. Uh, people put too much stock into it. They spend too much time on it. Uh, it. It warps their mind because instead of you know engaging with people in real life, they're just using people as props in their little social media fantasy world to, to gain social status in a fantasy world, not in the real world. So uh, you know some of the sourcing that I got from this was, was from a guy, Tristan Harris. I remember listening to a podcast he did with Sam Harris, no relation. And he was talking about some of the things I talked about. I got it from him. Just how these uh, these social media platforms, they use human psychology against itself to make money. And they do that not because they're evil, but they do it because people don't want to pay for their goods and services. So they must find other ways to monetize those. And one piece of advice that he left that I use is uh, I turned off notifications with social media. I mean... It'll, you'll be amazed, you know, uh, how, how, how little time you'll spend on social media when you turn off the notifications. I have no notifications for, for social media. So no Instagram, no Facebook, no Twitter, none of that. And my, my, <laughs> my use on a platform has nosedived. I mean, I probably spend maybe five to ten minutes on Facebook a week, if that. Probably even less on Instagram because I have better things to do, um, you know, like reading, doing research, uh, making myself more marketable on the market, you know, um, doing positive things for not myself, but for others and uh, standing up for my principles of traditional values, a small government, free markets, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of association, uh, freedom of religion, personal responsibility, uh, so on and and so forth. Uh, also, what I did was on, on my iPhone. I don't have any social media apps on the first page of my iPhone. I have them on the second page, and even in that, I have them in a little box. So I I changed the default so I don't use it nearly as much. It's kind of like if you like to eat junk food, you know, and you know that you're a sucker for junk food. Instead of blaming other people for your problems and blaming the junk food companies, what you can do is not buy the junk food and not keep it in your home because you'll eat what you keep in your home. So as long as you change the default, you'll be, it'll be much less likely that you'll eat junk food when it's not in your house than when you buy it. You have to take responsibility for yourself and your own actions. That's why I make these podcasts and, and give out the information because the social media companies are operating with their incentives and deterrence, and you have to operate within your own incentives and deterrence. Is it better to waste your time in your life putting on a facade for people who don't really care about you? Or is it better to invest your time and energy into uh, information and skills that will actually pay dividends? I'd say the latter, but some people will say the former. So all in all, if you're, if you're gonna take it from me, cut down on the social media use, Take responsibility for your own life and uh, stop feeding into uh, people's uh, enlarged egos. That's the Laura Gord podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, at the airliner, if you're in LA, come to the airliner every Tuesday evening from 9 p.m. to midnight for the Blues Jam 
Uh, it's free admission, 21 and over. Dollar Tacos, come enjoy some music. It's open mic. If you play an instrument, come on. Um, get the Lord Gord album, This Isn't TV, on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Title, title etc., etc. Share the podcast. Subscribe on YouTube, subscribe on iTunes, so on and so forth. Um, donate on Patreon, so on and so forth. Um, next week, I'm going to talk about the insidiousness of social justice, how it's an illiberal, totalitarian ideology, how it's the enemy of freedom, how it's the enemy of competence, and how it's the enemy of human dignity. I'm going to talk about some of the origins of social justice. Uh, I'm going to talk about institutions that purvey this wretched, evil ideology. I'm going to talk about um, examples of how it's been uh, enacted in real life and the dire consequences that came out of that. And uh, hopefully I'm going to change some minds. So I'm Lord Gord. Thank you so much for listening. Next week, check us out every Wednesday, 8 a.m., Thank you, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.